Welcome back to the channel. In a previous video listed in the description, I showed you how to add a custom charge that is extra, which could be packaging and so on. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add a checkbox that can be ticked to either remove the, the fee or that can add it. Now you can use this in uh, websites whereby you have different groups of people purchasing and maybe they are exempt from VAT or if you want to use this as a gift shop and you want people to be able to say I would like an extra wrapping on my gift please wrap it for me and just deliver it where you tick and then an extra fee would probably show up at the end here. So if this is something you're interested in let's continue with the video. I'll leave the code for you in the description, you can also be able to just pick that up and use it in your website or follow along with the video. So let's dive in. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a button right here for us uh, that will allow us to do this exact kind of thing. So the first thing that we do is add an action and this action is going to tap into WooCommerce and we're going to use a hook WooCommerce after checkout billing form and basically it's going for checking out after the billing form and the billing form is this particular section that we have here that has all the billing details that are actually needed. So we'll use the WooCommerce after checkout billing form hook and then we'll chain on our own kind of function and I'll call this press add VAT cancel button and that's the function we'll use, we'll copy this, add some space below and then start writing our function with the name and then write our code in here. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll add our own HTML, since this is outside of the usual billing form, we'll add our own HTML, so we'll echo and then we'll add a div tag inside here. So we'll do a div with an ID of VAT cancel, close this off, the semicolon and then I'll duplicate this so that I am able to close off this div and then take this away. Now after adding our HTML we go into the PHP and we're going to look for the WooCommerce form fields. Now inside the WooCommerce form field we're going to add a number of arguments that will allow for us to have this particular form on our front end. Before I do that let me save this and see what we have on our front end. We still don't have that field showing up, and that's why we need this particular code. So I'm going to uncomment this out and then we'll start by adding the ID. Take a press, VAT cancel, and that will be the ID of our field and the next thing that we need to do is describe what our field will look like by providing this array of information and then after that we shall tell WooCommerce to actually get the information from this field and then feed it anywhere. And the way we do that is by using the checkout and this checkout variable actually comes from the hook that we are currently using, the, uh, the action that we have here. It's available for us to use inside our particular function which is this. So we'll have this checkout and it has a method on it which is called get value. And the value that you're going to get is actually this particular ID. After getting that all I'm going to do now is just add the array that will show the information that we're going to show on the front end. So the first thing that we'll need is a label that will tell us what's going to happen. So here we're going to say I am VAT exempt, which will allow people to just tick so that they know I'm VAT exempt and then the calculation is not done. And then what we need to add is we need to add a class so that we can style this if we ever want to style it differently and this takes in an array and inside here we can pass in the WooCommerce 
common fields or we can pass in our own information. So I'll just call this a VAT cancel. Should I need to, to add any extra styling? So VAT cancel button. And then after adding the CSS, I need to add the type of field that it's going to be a checkbox. And this is all available for us in WooCommerce. They have made a form API of some sort that we can tap in. So we have the type of checkbox right there. Now, if I save this and then come and reload on the front end, you will see that we now have this box here, which actually does nothing. And so we are ready to now use it to do the difference and calculations that are used here. So the first thing that we do is actually trigger Ajax because we want to be able to do this. When you check this, you automatically, the customer gets the calculation done. Otherwise this becomes very static and it's not interactive. So we tap into Ajax, which is used by WooCommerce. So I'm going to inspect this. So right now when I check this, you can't see anything going on. But once I tap into the WooCommerce, you're going to be able to see that every time we tick it, we trigger off a function of WooCommerce to update the particular cut and update the information that's going on here. So how do we do that? We do that by using JavaScript. So we're going to use an add action that taps inside WordPress to use the WP footer hook. So we have our add action. And so we're going to use the WP footer. And this is going to require us to pass in our own function. And I'm going to copy this. And then I'll just say, take a press VAT, cancel, Ajax. So that will help us to make it unique. And so we start writing our function here. And then the first thing that we shall do at this particular moment of uh, starting our Ajax is we're going to write some JavaScript. So we need to escape the PHP and then we need to open it up again. And then we can have our script here. And then of course this will be a type of JavaScript. So it will be text stroke JavaScript. And so all our JavaScript will actually go inside here. But before we do that, we can add some performance uplift by saying we are going to check if this is actually on the checkout page. Then we run this particular script. If it's not, then we ignore it. So we'll say if is checkout. So if we are on the checkout page, then we shall run this particular PHP. So I can do this and then also close this. So if we are not on the checkout page, this particular JavaScript will not run. So that's how you improve some performance by doing very little things like those. Now let's go to the JavaScript. Now inside the JavaScript, we're going to use jQuery. So we start off with our jQuery. We're looking for documents. So when the document is ready, that's the event we are going to look for. So when it's ready, then we shall run our script that we do have. So when it is ready, we're going to run a function And what does this function do? This function is going to be checking for a particular ID. So we run in here and say we are looking for the ID and we first of all bring in the pound sign to say what are we looking for? We are looking for the ID of this field. And what we're going to do is say when we get this clicked, so when this is clicked, then we are going to run another function in here. So the function that we run when this is clicked is this. So the function that we'll do is we'll again use our jQuery and then search for the body. Inside our body of our document, we're going to trigger a WooCommerce function, which is actually called update checkout. So we look for update checkout. So now that our JavaScript is actually done, let's save this and then let's go to our front end. I want to show you how this works out inside our JavaScript and inside our console. So 
of course now we see that we don't have any issues but now we can see that we have a new order review that is available for us in here so every time I tick this I'll get the order reviewed if I uncheck it the order is reviewed check it review and check it is reviewed now what happens in the review here you look at the request tab and you will see that we have a WordPress nonce for security we have post data here that is tracking all this information and sending it inside our Ajax for example the first name the last name the phone number the billing email order comments but we don't have this data for this particular piece going inside the post data and that's what we're going to tap by the next code that we're going to add in to make sure that our post data can receive that information and then we can use it to update our checkout. So what do we do? We go for more PHP. So how do we want to work this out? We want to use this WooCommerce Calculate fees and that's why we want to have that particular action being triggered so that when we tick then we can calculate the fee inside our update. And how do we do that? First things first we're going to check if we have anything actually being posted from our form and we're going to check if we are using Ajax and we are not in the admin area. So we're going to say if there is no post or we're not doing any of these two things. So if we are in the admin then you ignore so we use the is admin function. If we are in admin ignore and if we are not using Ajax, if we are not using Ajax, then also we need to ignore. And how do we say ignore? We just return. So if we are using Ajax and we are posting information, then the rest of this code can run. The next thing we are going to do is we're going to check if we have post data, which we saw here, and we're going to try to chain on the post data that we do have. So we're going to come back here and say if is set. So we're going to check if is set. If we have post and inside this is all JavaScript. If we have post data, so we're now working within the Ajax and looking for that object. If we have that, then we are going to chain on our new posted data from our form and. If we don't have that set, if we don't have this available, then we're going to fall back to the non-Ajax way. We'll say post data is actually equal to what we are now posting currently. So we're, this is the fallback position. But if we have Ajax and we have this post data available, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it as a string. So we use the method of pass str string, which is PHP. And what are we going to pass in here for arguments? We're going to get our post data. And then we are going to ch uh, chain it onto the post data that is available. So we're getting what is being posted currently with this. And then we're going to chain it on the existing post data that's passed on into the Ajax. So once we've finished getting our variable of post data, the next thing that we're going to do is check if we've passed in the data from our checkbox here. So that's the next part we're going to do. So we'll say if is set, we're checking to see. So we're going to check in, in our post data object we actually have our TechiePress VAT cancel. So we're going to check, do we have this canceling information inside the post? And if we do, then we shall run our code of actually adding a custom fee. So the first things that I need to do is I'm going to do some code refactor to make sure that some things go way above uh, and beyond. So what I'm going to do is cut these and bring them before here. The global WooCommerce can always be up there. And then we are getting the flat fee from inside 
our admin area in the settings, we are getting the particular percentage. So if I check in my dashboard and then go to WooCommerce and then go to settings, we'll be able to see in VAT pricing where we set our flat fee and our dynamic fee of WooCommerce. So if I change this to maybe 0 0.1, which means 10% of the tax, and I came back and reloaded here, you'll see that this value is actually going to go below what it was before. Now, back to what we were doing. So we are able to get our flat fee and dynamic fee, so this is not broken, that's a good thing. And next we're going to say, we don't need flat fee is equal to flat fee, so I'll check, remove this. This code is checking for this field and getting to know whether it is ticked or not. If it is ticked, then it's going to say, please ignore the VAT. So what we're going to do at this point is just return meaning we'll not do any calculations. But if this is unchecked, then we shall be forced to calculate this fee that we have here and save it. So let me save this, come back here, reload, and I want you to check, whenever we tick this, we're getting an order review, and our fee is actually going away. When we untick it, we see that the VAT comes back. And inside our request here, just look at the post data and you will see. Currently, we don't have anything to do with Techie Press. But when I check this out, we just need to look at the next request and you will see that we have Techie Press that cancel is equal to one in here. So that's what we're looking for here and saying if we have set Techie Press data and it is actually true or it is equal to one, then we don't do anything. But if it is equal to zero or if it's non-existent, then we do the calculation in here. So you can always set this post data equal to zero so that if it's zero, don't do anything. If it's one, then do something. You can set this to false or to zero, it would actually work out well. So that's how we would make it possible to check this and check out. So you can use this on your gift shop to allow people to have wrappers ordered, and then you can add an extra fee for packaging. So if you enjoyed this video, please share it with friends, don't keep it to yourself. Like it, leave a comment if you're struggling with something, ask a question, and since it's a new math, I'm doing new content for the math. So you can leave in the comment what you would like to see on the channel. Otherwise, enjoy your day.